Okay, so one of the things I've been doing lately is maybe not doing on purpose, but I will get stuck with some type of idea and I won't know how to expand it. So I want to go ahead and build something today. Let's go ahead and just grab a couple samples. This isn't going to sound great, but just for um, all intensive purposes, let's go ahead and just do something like this. Let's bring our snare down. Let's bring in some automation or sidechain rather. And then let's get like some type of symbol loop. Something like that's probably good for one. Something like that's probably good for two. And then I like to get one that's kind of sharper, do beats, cut it in half, change it to this mode, and then just bring it down. Actually, wrong one, this one. Bring our volumes down of all of it. That sounds interesting. Maybe that one's a little bit better. Or maybe we do both. Sure. Something like that, right? So when you are writing a drop in this case, or I feel like it's mostly this case because for me, I like to use samples a lot. So looking at samples, it's really easy to edit, change pitch and stuff like that. And I don't feel like this really applies to MIDI as much because in MIDI, you can just go in and uh, change the note around and X, Y, Z, whereas samples, I think you have to be a little bit more um, meticulous about how you automate the transposition, but you don't have to do um, all the kind of hiccups in chopping audio. Anyways, so what I like to do, or what I have been doing rather, is I'll take something like a growl. Just take, that one's probably fine. Let's get an audio tracker and group it. And then let's go ahead and grab our sidechain as well, put that here. So let's grab this sample and then the key of D is fine. Do we do something like that's cool. I'm just gonna take like the first part of it. Something like that. And then we'll just like throw in samples that we think could sound cool. So I've been using Must Eye Sample Pack a lot and maybe not a lot. I've been using it for one track, but the sounds in here aren't super vast. They're definitely his style. I mean, some of them sound kind of goofy, uh, but what I've been trying to do is the sounds that I think sound goofy, try to utilize them anyways to see if they could potentially work in a track. So let's go ahead and make another audio track and let's just grab this sound. And then we're just going to kind of write a pattern here. So maybe we want to do it like this, like that. And then at the end, we want to have it speed up, something like that. And then we will just pitch this down one. So the first thing is it doesn't sound that great, obviously. Let's go ahead and grab an EQ and make this a little bit easier for the final product. So let's go ahead and grab an EQ. Let's EQ out all the low end. I'm even gonna drag this up a little bit. What I'm gonna do as well, and we talked about this a couple of videos back, is I'm going to grab a subgroup. Let's do that. And then no sub is gonna be coming from these. Um, and it's okay if they do, it's completely personal preference. But what I'm just gonna do is go into my browser again. Let's go back into that must eye sample pack. And you don't need the sample pack. This is just convenient for the uh, video. Something like that. Go ahead and tune it as well. I'm going to change it to tones. And now you have kind of a sub pattern going. So even without the basses, we kind of have like a complete thing going on. I'm even going to stretch that out actually. And we'll do D sharp or D rather, and we'll do complex. I think I actually grabbed the wrong one. Stand by. There you go. So let's do that. Let's lower tempo down a little bit, make this a little bit nicer to listen to. So what you have is something that sounds like this in context, which obviously doesn't sound great. So the things that I've been doing is you start off with something like this that sounds pretty garbage and you start to modulate things or you start to affect things. So I'm gonna grab a effect rack and we can just put it on our secondary base because our main base sounds pretty good. Maybe just a little bit of OTT. So we can actually do that right now. Let's go ahead and just drag that here. We don't need too much of the high end there because that hat and the symbols are playing at the same time, so that's going to take care of some of it. Let's even EQ these symbols as well. I don't usually use EQ3, that just popped up. And then let's grab an actual sample or effect rack rather. Did I already put it on here? I did. So it sounds pretty dinky as of now. So let's go ahead and change it to complex. Start messing some of the parameters. Let's 
So that one sounds kind of cool there. And this is just my effect rack. It doesn't have to be this one, but whatever you think sounds cool. So if you like to use an OTT in combination with a Camel Crusher and a Vocoder, that's going to work fine as well. And that was just an example. Um, here is everything that's in my sample pack or my central effect rack. Um, I've, we've talked about this many times, but you can kind of uh, peer here and see what's in there if you want to copy this. But so that's a little bit cooler. And then maybe something like an OTT after it to make it sound a little bit more enhanced. And then I like to put the saturator after. Something like that. And then you have something that sounds a little bit more um, plausible for the section. So without it, and then with it. You can even add like reverb throws in between two to make it sound a little bit cooler. So now our bass group. Sounds a little bit better, right? So now in context. And obviously we need something like a background effect or something like that to make it sound a little bit better. Let's go ahead and just do that just for the sake of the video. Let's do a tension. I like this one the best. And then we do it like minus 15. That was perfect. So obviously it doesn't sound great, but we're getting somewhere now versus what we just had. Now, this is kind of where I would be stuck. So imagine this sounds a million times better because um, my music is just so good, but um, this is where I would get stuck. So if I had like a secondary part, I'm like, okay, how do I go from here? Obviously you want your call and your response type thing. So maybe you want to do um, that here. And then on the second part, you just want to have it go like something um, a little bit more simple. So something like this. And then at the end, you could like do like a glitch or something, something like that, right? But what you can do as well is I don't feel like a lot of people People talk about this and I definitely don't see it in a lot of videos is you just double click this and you go up here to the manage sample file and now all you have to do is go back to any sample pack that you want or any sample that you potentially have go into here and let's go ahead and go back to the must die ones and now I'm just going to start dragging different bases here so we have this is our a and then here's another example so that one doesn't really sound great maybe try this one okay not really feeling that one either so that one has a little bit of potential, like it could have um, sort of a, you know, uh, the pattern on top of like the sustain base. So if we wanted to do something like that and just go in and manually make these ones a little bit longer. So let's try doing something like that and doubling this one. And then I think you kind of get the idea what I'm going for here. So let's go ahead and copy paste a couple more. And then we can go in here and grab like a sustain base, or you can go ahead and make one with like operator. Something like that maybe. And then just try to get the key right here. That's, is that perfect? Not quite. Let's go down one. And then you kind of have a variation pretty quick, like in a, in a minute or two. So obviously that doesn't really sound uh, polished, but I think it gets the idea across that if you want to do something pretty different, pretty quickly, all you have to do is just get your kind of section to a, a part or a, a place that you think it sounds good enough. Like all the background elements are uh, sounding pretty good, pretty um, full, like they would in the final product. And then you just go in and you start messing with um, variations, or you can just start messing with different samples to fill in here. Just make sure you pitch it after the fact. I find these little shorter ones are the ones that make a, a nicer difference, I would say. Like something like that. So again, sounds pretty basic, but you get the idea. You can start a pattern and then you can just manage that sample file and figure out what you want to do from there. So hopefully this gives you a cool idea. Um, if you didn't know about the manage sample file, it applies to everything, not just basses. So if you have like a kick and snare that you want to go through and replace it for the entire track, it does it like that as well. And I think the good thing is too, if you have fades and stuff on it, I believe it copies over. It looks like it does. So if you already kind of spent time fading in tracks or X, Y, Z, it can be a good way to get some variation in there without having to go in and redo all the audio. So so hopefully you learned something from the video. I know it's more of a basic tip, but hopefully it gets you some uh, more ideas and allows you to expand your track longer or make it sound a little bit better than what it did before. So that's all I have for you today. Hope you learned something and we will see you again in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.